and welcome to another Greater Culture Chats. We are diving into our nutrition series. This is part two. Part one, we talked about the why behind nutrition with it being the base of the pyramid and how it impacts how we show up in our day-to-day, -day, whether it's work, whether it's our personal relationships, whether it's our fitness goals, how important nutrition is. So with today's conversation, we're going to be diving into the when would it be appropriate or when would you want to think about or work on your nutrition? So we came up with a couple different factors that we hear a lot of or we see a lot of. And the first one that comes to mind for me is the aesthetic piece. Most folks jump into a gym, look for a nutrition plan because they're not entirely thrilled or happy with the way they look in the mirror or the way their clothes are fitting. So I think the aesthetic one is one of the big ones for us that it's like, hey, this is why I want to work on my nutrition or when I want to make that first step. Um, what is it about aesthetics that you think makes everybody be like, this is it. I'm into fitness. I'm into nutrition, et cetera. Well, you know, we all like to like how we look and we, you know, whether it be media, family, friends, like we're all getting crap from every different angle about what we're supposed to look like and all this kind of stuff. And as kids of the 90s, we're very aware of magazine covers and things like that. So like, it's just in your brain constantly. And so when your body isn't matching the image of yourself that you have in your head, it's difficult and a little unsettling. So yeah, that's definitely something that's going to lead you into wanting to know how to change that. And uh, yeah, the aesthetic piece is huge. And that's, you know, what it always comes down to when I ask people why they show up in the gym every day. It's like, is, are you coming because you want to work hard or because you want to look good? Because <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. Everybody I mean, always wants to look better, look better naked, look better in whatever outfit yeah. that you want to be in. And I totally agree. And I think that's a, a really powerful motivator that people mm -hmm. can use. And it is certainly one thing that gets them in the door of, yes, hey, sure. I'm interested to learn a little bit more and figure out how do I match these lifestyle behaviors to this goal of wanting to look a certain way, feel a certain way, fit into a certain clothes. So I think that's a big one for most folks of mm -hmm. when to take the first step or reach out and try and get some help on nutrition. It's just aesthetics. How do I look yeah. and am I happy with that? And is this something that aligns with, like you said, the view I have of myself? So I think that's a big one for most folks. Uh, what are What's another one that usually pops up for you as to when you might want to take the first step? Well, you know, there's there's those blessed people in the world that look the way they want to look with and can eat whatever the heck they want to eat. And for those people, they they come in and they're like, you know, I don't always, I'm kind of, you know, a little sluggish. I'm tired all the time. I just don't sleep good. I don't sleep good, blah, blah, blah. And it always goes back to sleep. And honestly, it probably is some sleep, but that's not today's topic. Uh, but it also goes back to what we're putting in our body to fuel it to work throughout the day. If you're putting crap into it, you get crap out. And um, so another one is those looking for, to to hit a better energy level and just to feel better throughout the day, which also kind of coincides with that, how do the insides feel during the mm -hmm. day? You know, you're like, oh man, my stomach, not great. Not getting too far from a bathroom today. Why is that happening? Again, you put crap in and you get crap out, right? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, definitely those energy issues that people are having through the day. And then that's leading to the GI distress as well. Yeah, 100% agree. It's funny how... Most of us, when it comes to like, oh, I'm sluggish, I'm tired, whatever, we, we go to the caffeine, we go to the energy mm -hmm. drinks, we try and use something else to try and get us through the day. And what we tend to find is if we looked at how much we're eating, you know, like we're, how much we're sleeping, like you mentioned, those are huge factors in giving us not, an, not just enough energy to get through the morning, but to get through the full day where it's not just the three and four o'clock crash or we get mm -hmm. home after a long day and it's like, poof. Your body is using energy constantly throughout the day, not just to work out, but just to do your basic daily functions. And so if we're not fueling or giving our bodies enough, then it would make sense that we might get a little bit tired or sluggish, um, especially if we're the type of food we're consuming mm -hmm. isn't really going to set us up for good energy. This is where yeah. you hear those people get those big crashes of like, man, I get this big high. 
because I loaded up on some food. And now all of a sudden, like an hour later, I'm like hitting it hard where I'm like ready to crash, take a nap. So part of that as well is something that we hear a lot of, of I just, my energy levels seem off. I can't seem to make it through a day. Uh, if I am, I'm always grabbing the caffeine or whatnot. So that's certainly a big one, I think as well, of like just generally, how do you feel with energy stuff? And you mentioned the stomach and GI issues. I think that's one that sometimes we overlook because we just assume mm -hmm. everybody deals with that or everybody has to in some way, shape or form work through that. Mm -hmm. That can be a kind of a sneaky one. That can be an indication that maybe there's something going on that we might want to change or do a little bit different. And that's something you've seen. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, you know, extra stress of course will always mess with that GI too, but that nutrition, I mean, maybe gluten isn't your thing and it doesn't, you know, have to be for forever, but maybe we just tried not or avoid it a little bit and see how we feel or, or as we age, you know, we might hate it, but the, the tomato and the sauce and the spaghetti is not sitting as well as it used to. And then that's making us feel bad the next day. And then we don't work out because we feel bad. And it's just like a whole terrible cycle. So there's these little things that we can tweak in our diet that then help us not just look better, but feel better as well. Yeah. And it's amazing how, some of these we develop over time where, like you said, something we've eaten or a way we've eaten has worked for us. And now all of a sudden we're starting to notice it's not. I noticed that a lot with like dairy and lactose. Mm -hmm. Some people don't realize that they might have sort of an intolerance to that. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. they're like, man, yeah, every time, you know, I go for the ice cream or the milk, like things don't really sit well with me. And I can tell that next day. And then even now there's so many lactose free versions of ice cream and milk and this and that and making small tweaks. They're like, yeah, I don't notice the bloating or the GI issues or the stomach problems that I've had before. So sometimes it's looking at what are some of the things I'm consuming and oh man, it really doesn't make me feel that great. So that can be a great indication of like, let's start experimenting with what we're putting in our bodies and mm -hmm. how that makes your stomach feel. And eventually like, yeah, do I want to or am I able to do all the things I want to do throughout my day? So I think yeah. that's a big one. And the other that, one that comes to mind for me is this idea of, uh, of performance of like, yeah. And all of these lead up to that too. Exactly. Yeah. If, if I'm sitting there and I'm like, stomach's not feeling good. Energy's not good. This and that, it makes sense. Why if I'm going to ask my body to do a little bit more, whether it's go for a run or lift some weights or participate in a group fitness class, we might not have the ability to actually get mm -hmm. through that class or perform as well as we'd like. And I think that's something you've probably seen as well in coaching. Oh, I mean, I experienced it yesterday. I, you know, <laughs> I like had a little like treat lunch, which was not the best lunch to that. Cause I normally work out in the morning and then I was working out in the evening and I had my little treat lunch. And then I got to the gym and I was like, I haven't drank enough water today. And what I, what I ate for lunch is not going to fuel this workout. And it took me way longer to recover. I was hurting through the workout and it just was not as fun of an experience as it could have been if I had eaten a more balanced lunch to help me with that workout later. I'm sure a lot of folks can resonate with that too, where I know I've had days where maybe you have a lot of meetings stacked back to back mm -hmm. and you maybe had a little window for lunch and you missed it, or you just grabbed something super small. And I know we've had a number of members will come to us in an evening class and, you know, they'll be like, Oh, I just haven't even had time to eat anything today. And you're like, oof, like, and they're trying to, you know, power down a power bar or something mm -hmm. or drink something to get some calories. And I mean, that's maybe helpful in the moment as a band aid to try and get a little energy. But yeah, that certainly is not going to be as enjoyable of an experience or as helpful as making sure you're eating enough, eating the right types of foods that mm -hmm. are going to allow you then to go enjoy that workout and get the most out of it. Um, so yeah. I think that performance side of the house is really interesting too. And mixed with that, when folks come in with certain aesthetic goals of like, hey, I'm looking to lose weight, build muscle, et cetera. What we find is if you're not eating or fueling properly, your body's not even able to take advantage of the work you're doing. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in putting on some muscle or changing your body composition, if you're not eating in a way that's going to support that, it really doesn't matter how much work you're doing in the gym to try mm -hmm. and get there. And I think that also is kind of ties into that performance side of the house as well. Yeah. 
yeah, these are all, you know, factors that start kind of rolling around in the brain, you know, as you're going through your day or you're going through your workout and you're just like, man, I really should probably look into this a little bit more because it, it has been bothering me. I've been thinking about it a lot. So now that like, in their head, they're trying, they're, they're getting there, right? We, we have the thought of like, I need to explore this extra nutrition realm to make, you know, these changes, where do they go from there? What's the next step? Well, I think if you're like most folks, you're probably going on Instagram and looking up whatever <laughs> the latest trend is or influencer and what they're doing and trying to figure that out. Maybe you're Googling or searching on YouTube. Maybe you're asking a friend. So I think those are always like the go-tos of like, well, mm -hmm. this person looks this way and like, I want to look like that. So I should definitely do what they're doing. And I would say we put a pause on that rather than mm -hmm. jumping in to any particular eating plan or lifestyle. I think it's always helpful to just get a baseline and foundation of what are your current practices and what are your current mm -hmm. habits around eating? Because a lot of times people are like, oh, I just need to overhaul and change everything. And that lasts for a day, a week. And then it's like, no, that didn't work at all. And now they're back onto whatever style they were before. So I think it's helpful just to take stock of what you're currently eating. And for folks who do that, what would you recommend for them in terms of like, if I want to get a baseline or foundation, what should I mm -hmm. track or what should I think about? I think a good, you know, three to five day food journal is a great idea. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to pay for an app. You don't need to do my fitness pal. Like you don't have to do all that stuff. If you just write it down or put it into your notes app, say I had a cup of this or a handful of that or a bag of that. It's super helpful just to see where you're at and definitely include some weekend days in there because you know, we are not the same person on Monday that we are on Saturday and we mm -hmm. don't eat the same things. And that's for sure. So we want to get a full view of some weekdays, some weekends and you know, just jot it down real quick. What did you have? Or another option is just take pictures of it. Take pictures of it, put it into a folder. And then when you sit down with someone who can help you with your nutrition, you actually have something to talk about. Like, and you can say, this is what I am doing. And you have a baseline to then work from. Cause it might not be as bad as you think it is. It might be just, Hey, we just need to tweak a few things and we're good to go. And if we do that over a long period of time, we're set, but it might be really bad, you know? Uh, but, <laughs> but just having the information to begin with is super helpful. Yeah. And one other thing that I always think is helpful too, we talked about this idea of energy and how you feel and, and taking note of some of those things as well. So if I'm taking photos or just writing down how I feel, or I mean, what I'm eating, sometimes it's nice to just track, like, how did you feel today? Like mm -hmm. felt energized, felt full, felt good. Or like, man, I felt really bloated. This didn't sit well with me or like energy was great. Made it through my workout and felt awesome. Those things can help too. You start to make some of those connections around what you're eating, how you're feeling, and that helps mm -hmm. with that process as well. So I really like that idea of taking photos, maybe capturing it down. Um, because what we've tend to see with most folks is they both over or underestimate mm -hmm. how much they're eating by a pretty large percentage. Yeah. You know, if people were to ask you, how are your nutrition habits or what's your eating like? Most people say pretty good. Yeah. And that can just mean such a wide range of things. So being a little bit more specific, having some evidence of like, hey, here's my current eating practices and what it typically looks like goes a long way to then being able to make any changes if you're ready. And mm -hmm. I think that's maybe a nice final point here is we talked about some of those things that we might notice, aesthetics, energy, performance, and stomach. But what about the mindset of when somebody might be ready to take the first step in terms of if I know there might be some changes that are necessary, how do I know if I'm ready to make those changes? Mm. Yeah. And that's, that's a tough one because we all want to be in that perfect mental state to be able to make a change because change is tough and no one really likes doing it. And so having, you know, in the back of the head, like, well, I'm just not ready. I don't have enough time. It's going to stress me out, all these kind of things. If, if you are at a point where you are looking for more from yourself and you want to focus on yourself, not in a selfish way, but just in general, in a healthy way, um, it's definitely a good time to make that change. If you have been in the gym for a while, you're making, and you're really consistent, right? You're making that decision to go to the gym most days of the week, work hard. 
you've got a good base to be able to make a change. You're already doing something that's semi-difficult that a lot of people don't do. So you can probably go ahead and take it a step further. And the other thing is you, you, you know, if you do have a partner or roommate or kids in the house, just making them make the change with you is also very helpful (laughs) Mm -hmm. to have that group around you is, is pretty great as well, because having that support system is very important. Yeah, totally agree. There's never the perfect time. There's never everything falls into place. I'm now stress-free and et cetera, et cetera. Life is always going to happen. So Mm -hmm. if you're like, when should I take, make the first step? Probably now. Um, Mm -hmm. from just about everybody, there's something that we can do to improve the way we're eating, which will improve the way we feel, our energy, the way we show up, our aesthetics. So a lot of those factors can fall into place once we start the process of understanding what we're eating and then maybe making some changes that align with our lifestyle or what we're striving towards. So Mm -hmm. I think that's a great place to call it for part two, which is the when do you want to take the first step? And even giving folks that that opportunity to start to put some pen to paper or take some mm-hmm. photos of what their current eating habits look like. Because in the next upcoming uh, parts of the series, we're going to start diving into, all right, I do want to do nutrition in terms of thinking about what I'm eating. I've done a little bit of logging. What's next? Because that's mm-hmm. usually what the question is of what should I do and how should I eat? So we're excited to dive in to those in the upcoming parts of our series. So yep. for Chelsea and Brad, this is part two of our nutrition series, when to take that first step to improve your nutrition and your lifestyle. We look forward to catching you on the next episode of our series. Uh, for both of us, have a great rest of your day. Bye.